the June 15, 2016 meeting of the Scarborough Town Council. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, before we recite the Pledge of Allegiance, I would like to take a moment of silence for the victims mm. of the Orlando mm. uh, shootings. Now, if you'd all rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Councilor Babine? Present. Councilor Rowan? Here. Councilor Katarina? Here. Councilor St. Clair? Here. Councilor Hayes? Here. Councilor Cazzo? Here. Chairman Donovan? Here. Uh, uh, general comments. Uh, uh, I'd like to recognize uh, former, distinguished former counselor uh, Judy Roy uh, uh, for some comments uh, as a part of public comment time. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Chairman. Um, I uh, just basically wanted to come and say to you, the council, thank you very much for asking me to go to the Greater Portland Council of Governments today and to uh, uh, receive the award for the town uh, recognition award by GP Cog. Um, it's been my baby. Uh, it took us almost 10 years to get the tri generation uh, up and going, uh, and uh, I, I've been there all along the way, so I was really pleased to, to be asked uh, to, to go and, and receive it on your behalf. So, with that, I will leave the plaque with you. We're not going to read it. There's a little bit of a mistake in it. <laughs> I'm shocked that you found it, though. <laughs> well, our thanks to uh, Judy Roy and all the others who persevered in that project. This was a, a very nice, uh, this is, uh, the Organization uh, of Cooperative Government for the Greater Portland Area, mm -hmm. and it recognized the Town of Scarborough for uh, taking an initiative to create a tri-generation electric electricity facility here uh, that is cutting edge and provides uh, low-cost uh, electricity for heating and air conditioning, uh, uh, it's been a it's been a wonderful project, and Judy was a leader throughout the entire project, and we thank you, Judy. Other com general public comments. Anyone wishing to uh, comment, please uh, approach the podium. Uh, seeing none, I'll uh, ask for a motion on the minutes of June 1, 2016. So moved. Second. Uh, any comments or corrections? Stay none. Uh, fine. All in favor. Uh, unanimous, uh, Chris Caizzo, abstain. Adjustments to the agenda, none this time. At, at this time. Uh, Treasurer's warrants, I will sign later. Uh, order number 16-33, 7 p.m. public hearing and second reading on the proposed third amendment to contract zone V, Scarborough Realty, LLC, the Mercedes-Benz dealership, located at 137 U.S. Route 1. And the explanation for that is coming from? I'm pleased to, to give a, a very cursory uh, introduction. Uh, this matter was before you uh, and was passed in first reading, was subsequently referred to the planning board, whom heard the matter and held public hearing last week, I believe. I believe minutes from that meeting uh, were included mm -hmm. for your review and consideration. And as a uh, the contract zone amendment process requires, it's back before you tonight. Uh, to be considered in final reading. Great. Public comment on uh, this uh, this matter. Please approach and state your name and address. <coughs> My name is Robert Cook. I live at 26 First Street in Scarborough. Like a, at the planning board meeting, I stated my problem is not with the Mercedes dealership. It's a problem with you people sitting up there. This was put in years ago. Nothing is being done about what they're supposed to do. Uh, a few cars off our streets. I have uh, tractor trailers unloading cars on my street. I have them loading cars on their property at 9 o'clock at night, and the guy spends the night in his diesel truck running it all night. So 
So for their proposal, like, I don't have a problem with it, but I would like you people to address what was written the first time, okay? And I also have another question is, I haven't been able to get a definitive answer. As an abutter, am I supposed to be notified if anything is done as the property that I abut? Does anybody have an answer for me, definitive answer? Uh, th this process does not uh, require us to send out a butter notification. It does, so it does by not. the state statutes, you do not have to. Correct. Correct. The okay. planning board process, uh, I believe it does, has a notification. Okay, then, so I did get one this time. I didn't get one for the first reading, and, but I have to admit I'm only here six months uh, of the year, so uh, I might have missed one. I don't have a problem with that. But just as long as somebody notifies me what's going on to people around me, I don't have a problem, especially a big building like this. Thank you. We'll follow up on those concerns. I do appreciate that, and I hope you do have a copy of the first one. I, we've got a half a page here of some of the stuff. So if you could just look at that and tell me how do I enforce it. A copy of what? I'm sorry. Well, the original contract zone was very tightly worded. Uh, as yes, it was. I agree with you. Yeah. It refers to uh, regarding all sorts of activities that can or can't happen on that property. Nobody's, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot, can't think of the word. Nobody's uh, enforcing, enforcing it. it, except me, my neighbors, calling occasion. I called down a couple of years ago. I don't remember what was going on. You know what I got for an answer? I wasn't here then. I said, that's not the answer I need. Find me an answer. I don't know. I wasn't here. Well, I don't accept that answer. But I can only beat my head against the wall so, so many times. And I'm just happy to be here and say what I want to say. But as far as what they're doing, I don't have a problem with it. Okay? I do encourage you to call. I mean, uh, honestly, when infractions happen after hours, who do I weekends, call? Uh, you, you should call dispatch, and they will make Dispatch, the police department? Dispatch. Mm -hmm. That's 24 hours a day. Okay, I mean, some of these infractions, I know they're not coming down. Maybe I'll just call and make sure it's a record. Someone exactly had suggested right. call. Exactly right. And if I've got four or five calls, That's right. you know, if I come back here again and say, hey, I got five of these and nobody's doing anything. And at the very least, a police officer can observe whether something's happening or it isn't. Well, happening. a lot of times, uh, I had asked Ira for uh, a stop sign coming out of his property, and I got one like this. It lasted four or five years. I think Snowplow got it. They do have a no left hand turn coming up towards my house. Occasionally, people will come up, and once in a while, I guess I don't have a problem with it, uh, but it's, they don't stop. They treat it like uh, I coming, anybody coming uh, north on First Street has to yield to them. Okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other public comment? Seeing none, we'll close. Oh, 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 one more. Thank you. <laughs> no room to move. <laughs> I do happen to have the half a piece of paper with me tonight. And I live down closer to Maple Avenue. Can you identify yourself? Oh, I'm sorry. Barbara Foley, 8 First Street. I forgot that part. I live down closer to Maple Avenue. And um, the fall, August, September of 2014, I'm outside discussing my renovation plans with my con contractor, and I hear this loud, loud noise, and I'm like, what is that? I go to the front of my house. There's an 18-wheeler car carrier coming from Maple Ave headed up First Street. They're not supposed to do that. Also, right after the planning board meeting last week, I'm sitting there and I look out, little Mercedes white SUV with Mercedes written on it in a blue stripe goes up the street from Maple Ave. I've seen their parts van go up. These are delivery items that shouldn't be going here. And it says right here, U.S. Route, um, first realty, First Realty, First Garber Realty or Main LLC shall notify all vendors, jobbers, and delivery vehicle operators who regularly visit the property that they should avoid traveling on the foregoing streets and roads and utilize U.S. Route 1 or First Street via Green Acres Drive or Lane to the property with direct access, with direct access from U.S. Route 1 being preferred. Right. And they don't prefer to use that. I've seen a Ford pickup truck come down Route 1 from Lake Saco, so it's headed north, comes up to the light, takes a left onto Green Acre Lane, and goes through the back. And the preferred is Route 1. And like uh, Mr. Cook said, 
coming out of there, they don't care. I was driving down the street last week and there's this great big prime van. It was the wholesale parts van. He stopped and I'm like, okay, and, you know, I'm watching him. And all of a sudden when I get close enough, he goes whoop, right out, goes up to the light and takes a right under Route 1 to head south. Why didn't he go out the front? As preferred in the contract zone. And the other thing that Mr. Cook mentioned last week, and I didn't really pay much attention to it, but it's the car alarms. How to find a car on the parking lot? Use the car alarms. I was working outside my house Friday, and I'm hearing this car alarm, and I'm going, you know, we hit car alarms. How, how fast do you react to shut it off when you accidentally hit it? Because yeah. you don't want this horn blaring. They have a little four-seater golf cart to ride around. Unlock the cars, the lights flash. Use that instead of the alarms. So it's, I don't have a problem with what they're doing in the building and what they build on there. It's just how they're going off their property and the noise that they're causing in the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? <laughs> Judy Roy on 2nd Avenue, I live right close to that and I can attest to some of the things that they're saying and as we discussed it before the meeting and uh, uh, the gentleman uh, said what he needed to do actually and that's call. The police department can do nothing about the problems unless calls are made to document an infraction. <coughs> Whether the police go or not is not a, uh, important. Uh, if it's something minor, but unless you have a record that 10 times this month mm -hmm. these things happened, um, there's nothing to go on. So uh, I would uh, hope that anybody that lives in that area <laughs> would take that to heart and, you know, make the calls. Because, I, you know, I've seen a lot of what, they, what they're saying, so. Thank you. Any other comments? May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion. Kate. Um, I was actually here for that when that was first put into play, and I know that it, like any time we do these, it was heavily scrutinized. Um, we worked closely with Mercedes with it over it. Mercedes was, um, in in my opinion, at that time was bending over backwards to meet any kind of um, issues that any um, council members. Planning board, zoning, every every single thing we threw at them, Mercedes was bending over backwards to make sure they took care of. Um, I have to agree with former Councillor Roy. The only way that we're going to be able to help you with any of this stuff is if it gets reported. Because right now, this is the very first time I've heard one complaint about Mercedes in the five years I've been sitting in this chair. Mm. So it's hard for us as a council to be able to do anything when it's the very first time we're hearing anything. I don't know, you have to, I mean, I'm just answer. I'm just, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, so I guess my point is, um, if it does continue, if there are further issues, um, I have a lot of confidence in Mercedes that they're going to address those issues and make sure that they don't continue just because they've had such a strong track record with us. And every time that I personally have spoken to them, um, every time they've come in front of us in the five years, um, they have been, and they've admitted before, if they've done something wrong, they've admitted it, they've fixed it, they've cleaned it up, they've taken care of it. Um, I personally have never had an issue with any of that. But again, I have not heard any, this is the very first time since we put this into play and Mercedes came in front of us that I've heard a complaint against them. That's just, that's just my, my personal take. Thank you. Sounds like it is. So for full disclosure, I also live in the neighborhood. I'm on Elmwood. I'm at the farther end of the neighborhood, so I don't hear any of this, so I, I can't really attest to the activity. I have seen vehicles in the back there is just kind of casually going by. Um, it does strike me, though, that I'm, I'm very pleased that, that neither uh, nobody that spoke is really opposed to the amendment, which is really what we're here to debate, which I think is important. Um, I think it's, um, it's a positive thing that... Um, they're be able to expand and, and keep their business going. I think um, those concerns are legitimate and um, hopefully they'll be addressed in the zoning board when the zoning goes through and looks at what they will approve and what they won't approve. If there are things in the other in the contract zoning that has not been accomplished yet, I'm hoping the zoning board will, will recognize that and either work with Mercedes to correct those in conjunction with this or uh, find another way to solve those solutions. I will say, though, I did have, uh, reading Mr. Cook's comments from the last planning board, 
Um, as the council knows, I sent some questions to, to Manager Hall. Um, I do believe that that's something that ordinance should take up in terms of notification requirements. I think we do do it for, for zoning. I don't, if the mechanism's in place, um, it, it may not be a state law, but it could certainly be an ordinance. And I would like to see that issue brought up in front of ordinance committee, debated, discussed, and potentially have that changed as well if possible. I agree. Other comments? Good point. So I, I just wanted to comment because I didn't I didn't hear it earlier. It may have been may have been noted, but in the material that we were given, it was uh, uh, a unanimous uh, approval of, of the planning mm -hmm. board. I just wanted to point that out publicly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just want to clarify. This is a public hearing second reading. This will not go back to the planning board, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. Other comments? Um, I think it does go back. For yeah. Final yeah, site plan. <laughs> final site plan approval. That's my in that respect. Yes. yes. Uh, as opposed to the contract zone. Right. Right. At that point, yes. it's site plan approval under the newly amended contract zone. Yeah, so, so, but it's not coming back to the council. Correct. So this is the last time the council. Okay, right. sorry, I just want to make sure I clar clarify. Um, that's, I don't need anything else. Uh, any other comments? Mm -mm. Uh, the general manager of the Mercedes Benz facility is here. He has heard your comments, uh, and I think that's probably uh, when when it, it is always good advice to be told to call to make a record. It also gets tiresome after a while uh, when you see it, and you go, "Well, that wasn't a big offense, but it is inconsistent with what we understood the arrangement was." And so, in those circumstances, it's better to have the uh, leadership of the Mercedes-Benz facility know that those things are irritating the neighborhood because it's always been my understanding in reviewing this that the Mercedes-Benz people wanted and do want to be good neighbors mm -hmm. and therefore uh, it's I think uh, incumbent upon them to take a more active role than wait for 10 calls to dispatch. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. if you would. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Dan Dusan, I'm the general manager there, and, and I don't like any of this, believe me, we want to be good neighbors. Uh, a few years back, Mr. Cook's car was vandalized while he was in Florida, I called Ira up, I said, bring it right over on our lot. We want to be good neighbors when the light was uh, uh, filtering into people's bedrooms over there, we had custom shades made around the lights. I mean, the first I heard of this was was at the planning board meeting. I already addressed some of these issues, and, and believe me, I'm there every single day except for Sundays. Uh, and I'm more than willing to work with this, uh, and I appreciate the comments. And uh, if there was a truck unloading up back, I'll tell you, it's a onesie or twosie. They all know not to do that, and I'll, I'll make sure that doesn't happen. If Mr. Cook reaches out to me or anyone does, I'll, I'll make sure it's handled. Thank you. And I apologize that it did happen. Thank you. And, 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 and as far as the key goes, I understand that. I met with, I personally met with every single employee that works for me. He said, do not use the keys to locate a car going forward, and that was just, just yesterday. Good. Thank you. Uh, any other uh, comments from council members? Uh, all in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thank your you. time and your interest. Thank you for listening. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Cook. Thank you. Order number 16-34, 7 p.m. public hearing and second reading on the proposed third amendment to contract zone I, Frank R. Goodwin, ENF Limited Liability Company and Raymond C. Field Land Rover Dealership located at 371 U.S. Route 1. Uh, just I'll do the simple introductions. Uh, simply by way of coincidence, really, this, this matter is tracking on a similar pace <laughs> and is before you at the same time and the same pace. Um, as was mentioned before, this matter was heard before the <coughs> planning board last week. Uh, there has been a favorable recommendation or advisory recommendation from them. Uh, minutes are there for your review, and it's back before you for uh, final action. I do have a uh, revised draft, and I believe this incorporates one of the suggested <coughs> additions uh, by the planning board. Can I give you four there? Yeah, you did. Okay. And the version I'm sending you uh, is what was passed in first reading, and you'll note on the second page, there's just one proposed uh, change. And should you wish to do that, that should be offered by way of amendment. 
And I believe the intent there is just to add a little more specificity or clarity um, as to the plan. So Good. Uh, <laughs> uh, and what we will do is we'll take public comment and then we'll take a motion to amend. Uh, public comment on this matter. Please approach the podium. Seeing none. Uh, let's start by putting the matter on the table. I'll accept the motion. So moved. Second. Uh, public comment or is it uh, councillor comments? Councillor St. Clair. Um, I think we just talked about this not that long ago, the same time we talked about Mercedes, and um, I know at that time, I do actually know the architect um, from a long time ago. I worked with him before in a past life, it feels like, um, and so I know his work. It's good work. It's solid work. Um, I know when, we, when they were in here before, we had no issues with what they were doing. No one raised any concerns, um, so it's in my opinion that there wouldn't be any reason to um, not see this pass. Uh, if someone would present a motion to amend. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, and that is a motion to paragraph 3B, uh, uh, following the word elevation, add the words plans prepared by Ryan Senatore, architecture dated May 13, 2016. Uh, uh, comments and discussion on the motion to amend. Uh, okay. Just general comment, I think it's important to note that uh, there were no public comments at the planning board as well, so um, just for the people out there that um, there certainly was some public comment at the Mercedes uh, issue when that came up, there was zero public comment noted for, for this dealership. Uh, other comments on the motion to amend? Mm -hmm. uh, we're voting on the motion to amend first. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous? Uh, we now have an amended main motion. Uh, any further discussion on it? All in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All business. Uh, none at this time. New business. Order number 16-44, act to authorize the town manager to enter into an interlocal agreement with the town of Old Orchard Beach and the city of Westbrook for shared vehicle maintenance and repair services. I'll ask the town manager to introduce this. Yes. Part. We were approached uh, first by the city of Westbrook um, late last fall, I think, and the connection there was one of our longtime firefighters uh, took, a new, took a position with Westbrook Fire and he very quickly appreciated that they had some challenges with maintaining their fire and rescue fleet and had firsthand experience and knowledge of um, our abilities too. And so he approached Mike Shaw uh, just to see if we'd all, it all be interested. And around the same time, as you, uh, you might recall, we've had a, a budding partnership with Old Orchard Beach in many respects, but most recently and notably with Dispatch. And that really has um, caused us to consider all of what we do in terms of how we can further cooperate and so uh, it was identified that they were similarly interested and so Mike worked with his colleagues in those two towns, uh, got a sense of what their fleet uh, was composed of, uh, compared that against what our technical abilities are and determined that it's certainly within our capabilities but did determine that we needed to hire one additional technician to handle that additional workload and in the uh, in the municipal budget, that position was provided for to accommodate and anticipate this, uh, these relationships going forward. Uh, what we've prepared for you, um, well, I should say, uh, as part of the analysis, we wanted to make certain that uh, Scarborough taxpayers weren't subsidizing this effort at all. And so we've come up with a, uh, an hourly rate that considers certainly all wage and benefit expense, overhead, uh, even builds in profit margin for us and even with all of that added in it comfortably covers our costs and then some uh, it's still very very attractive to the other communities uh, they're currently paying market rates that are significantly higher than this mm. than this number so we're very confident we can provide these services uh, we've been working closely with our insurance company luckily we all have the same we're all part of the same risk pool mm. uh, and so I and before you this evening, looking for authorization um, to enter into these interlocal agreements, I would note that um, there's a couple of fine-tuned modifications that I intend to make in Section 3. I will elaborate at Councillor Chiazzo's suggestion uh, penalties for late payment, kind of standard mm -hmm. fare. 
Uh, I should have caught that the first time through. And then section seven re regarding insurance, it will include specific uh, insurance requirements, types mm -hmm. and, and amounts, dollar amounts, mm -hmm. just to be clear. And uh, I don't anticipate any issue in that regard. And I hope you'll allow me to, the flexibility to insert those pieces um, in the final draft. Mm -hmm. I think we're gonna proceed on the uh, assumption that uh, the approval given won't require a motion to amend, but rather uh, it is understood to include uh, the uh, flexibility in uh, finalizing the draft of the town manager to include those provisions that Council Gays have brought to his attention. Uh, general public comment, please. <coughs> Seeing none, uh, I'll accept the motion. So moved. Second. Discussion. Uh, I just want to thank uh, 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 Mr. Hall for uh, uh, responding so quickly to my questions and concerns. That was that was quite rapid. So I do very much appreciate that, and I apologize to council if that was a little too detailed. Uh, <laughs> you know, the contract things is what is for commercial contracts. So I, I, not being a lawyer, I do tend to look at it though from the seller's perspective. So I I, uh, I appreciate the uh, the indulgence. I, sh I, sh I failed to mention, uh, some might ask, and actually Kate Collins from the current newspaper asked, why, what's in it for, the, for Scarborough? And right. it's a fair question. It, yeah. there's, it's, uh, the benefits are obvious to the other communities, but I really see this as a furtherance of us, um, you know, it's that intermunicipal cooperation. And though we may not be on the kind of receiving end of these services and the so-called benefactor, uh, we very likely will be next time. And I see this as really a part of the strategy going forward. I think we need to partner and band together uh, to find cost-effective solutions, and uh, I see this as a, a really good opportunity. Councilor St. Clair. Um, it kind of goes back a little bit, yeah. a couple of years, where we've been talking for at least the last three or four years about trying to, um, you know, work with other school districts and bring services and shared services and things like that. And it just makes sense that we should try to do more of that with municipality on the municipality side. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to put um, Councillor um, Babine on the spot, but I just was curious. I mean, it just seems like this is something that I'm, I'm wondering if like going forward in a fine on the financial side, if it's something that if there's any other areas in the budget that we could potentially start looking forward to that maybe other areas where we could have shared services. I don't know if that's if we even have any of those available, but it's just it was just kind of like a side note for me, thinking it might be something to talk to you about um, to pick your brain to see if you thought of anything that Old Orchard or any of that or South Portland or anybody else that where we could share services. It's just we're in such a crunch and. Um, you know, the budget is such a contentious thing for us right now, and I, you know, I, just going forward, it was more of me, like a light bulb, like, this is, seems like such an, such an easy thing for us to do, and it's a great thing that we're doing. Gosh, there's got to be other areas somewhere in this budget that we could be doing that. I don't know if that's possible, and please tell, no, I'm not asking for you to give me a presentation tonight, but just sort of like to put it in the back of your brain, if you ever thought of anything, I'd be um, really intrigued to have that discussion. Thank you. Uh, other comments? Councilor Caterina. Yeah, um, I, I think this is a real testament to the quality of the maintenance department, or whatever you want to call it, the <laughs> service department of our public works department. Mm -hmm. I know just from being out and about in the community um, that they do very good work there on uh, trucks and vehicles and whatnot. And I find myself explaining that to taxpayers a mm -hmm. lot who are like, why are they driving around in these brand new this and that? And I said, well, do you realize they're not brand new? Yeah. We have a really, really good top quality maintenance division uh, in our public works department. And this is just a further testament to it that uh, these other two towns are looking to us to help them. Um, and, and I agree with Councillor St. Clair, you know, that whatever we can do to be doing these sort of interlocal um, agreements, makes all sorts of sense from a, a fiscal point of view. <coughs> so um, I definitely will, will support this. Councilor Bailey. Um So a couple of points. First is um, to um, Councilor St. Clair's um, um, concept. Absolutely, I think that's a topic that the Finance Committee can take up, not only 
um, preferably not this summer, <laughs> but uh, definitely within um, the next year and really should look at all of its inter current interlocal agreements as well as any yeah. opportunity. Um, this debate about interlocal agreements or the debate about consolidated services has been around for mm. at least the 20 years that I've been um, involved at both the school level when they first started talking about consolidation of schools, but then also at the county level when it's talked about services that um, can be consolidated. And I believe the first bigger debate was before Mr. Hall was here, and that was really about um, communications, um, 911 communications and dispatching, in which the county offered uh, many communities to sign up uh, with them. Scarborough has always been a leader in finding opportunities through I its own interlocal agreements with other communities. In fact, I believe uh, one of our first ones was with the town of Old Orchard Beach in which we were doing their dispatch um, and maybe some other auxiliary areas. I can't remember exactly, but again, that's about 20 years. Um, there's going to be a debate, though, when you get into that because it's about what role does county government play in really promoting that and uh, maybe uh, managing some of those agreements versus the local <laughs> municipalities. So there's always this debate or uh, conversation between MMA and county government mm -hmm. and uh, what is the role of the town versus the role of the county and who provides what services and negotiates that. So it's a much bigger conversation, um, but I'd be happy to bring that up on the finance. Regarding this particular agreement, I do want to congratulate um, Mike Shaw's team and, and really the integrity and the reputation of his team and the services that they provide speaks for itself and the fact that we can enter into this agreement. The challenge with agreements like this is that it goes over two counties. So, uh, you know, again, you get into that whole debate. So I think this is a great, um, an, an additional example of, um, you know, us reaching out to others and uh, providing services and gaining a little bit out of it, but, well, not a lot. Mm -hmm. So, thank you. Councillor Rowan. Um, so I just had a question. This is this is just a, an hourly rate. This isn't a guaranteed of number of hours. Correct. So, but we feel like there's enough work to justify a full-time position. Oh, certainly. Just we, just the regular uh, routine scheduled yeah. maintenance alone yeah. will be enough to keep one technician busy. Uh, some other good questions were asked. What happens? Who gets priority when things get tight? Uh, and and I expect we'll triage the situation. We'll deal with the most uh, prevalent problems first. Um, I just for my part, this is constantly on my mind, and I can say on behalf of my other colleagues, we're in an environment where we need to be creative, and every opportunity we have, whether it's through a vacancy or by attrition or retirement or what have you, and I was just, I made a quick list just in the last two years. We've done dispatch with Old Orchard. We've done assessing with Cape Elizabeth. Uh, we do Harbor Master with Cape Elizabeth. Yeah. Now we're doing vehicle maintenance with two other communities. The school's doing food service with mm -hmm. Cape Elizabeth. So. It's in the forefront, and that's not going anywhere. I think it's only going to get greater. And I guess the final point I make, rather than having services pushed down upon us that don't make sense and right. allegiances that don't aren't comfortable or mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. it makes sense. Uh, it's best when it makes sense, and it's kind of organic, and you take those opportunities as they come, and we'll continue to. So, so this may be a little picky, Yoon, but I'll take the opportunity since Councillor Katarina opened up the floor to the, to the maintenance <laughs> department. Um, I, I would, again, like to advocate, I think I did this at finance, um, I'd like to advocate in front of the entire council now that we, um, for police and fire and basically any town vehicle, do the same thing that they do for public works, and that's put the vehicle number as well as the date that the, the vehicle was purchased. Uh, I think that ends a lot of discussion in town very quickly when a nice, bright, shiny dump truck goes by and they say, look, there's another brand new truck. And you yeah. say, actually, no, that, that's eight years old. And you can tell by looking at the first number. So it's, it's in motion. Yeah. I, I do recall you bringing it up in finance. So <laughs> just taking the opportunity. Sorry. Very good. Thank you. Oh, Tell yeah. I just had that one last point. It's just for me, if I feel like if I'm going to sit here and, and ask the school department to you know, buckle down and look at shared services. You know, I feel like I've got to do the same thing on my side. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like it's something that you know could potentially be really um, important for us and something that we can't ignore at this point. So um, I think it's a wonderful thing, and I kudos to all of you who have worked on it. it speaks volumes, Mike Shaw. I mean, honestly, you see his department come up, and you know that. It's going to be, it, the numbers are going to be correct. It's going to be on board. Um, I've never seen anything come out of his department that isn't 100%. So I think, I think that um, those two towns are actually very, very lucky to be getting his help. Sure. True. Other comments? Uh, 
when I went over this with the town manager earlier this week, uh, just so the public will realize, uh, it isn't just the hours that we're going to pay for the new hire. Uh, all of the overhead aspects, because there's management associated, but it's hard to pin down. Mm -hmm. And so the town manager in developing a figure put all that in there, a profit margin, yep. uh, so that we are making money uh, on this. It's a big savings for uh, uh, the communities that we're doing business with, but we are making money on this, and it's a 25% margin. 25% <laughs> profit margin uh, over and above what we expect to be our cost. So I think that's important for the public to realize that this is an arrangement that is not just a gratuity on our part. Uh, we're making money on this. Other, Chris. I, I, that's a great point. Um, I think just to piggyback, perhaps we could end up putting something like this in the budget so it stays out in front of the public so they know what the breakdown is so that they know that if as the rates go up, just as there's an, a, a description of what is included in the rate. We, we know it now. It's in our package, but uh, some way to keep that moving forward so people, if they ask the question, there's a common breakdown. It's all right there. It's very clear. And yep. It'll make point other, yep. other comments? Uh, Let's vote. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Order number 16-45, Act to authorize the town manager to enter into a license agreement for the use of the town's parking lot at Pine Point, uh, uh, which we refer to as Hyde Herd Park, for overflow parking by Bailey's Lobster Pounds. Uh, ask the town manager to explain this. Uh, uh, matter for us. Yeah, we were approached back in early May by uh, by Sue and Vinnie Bailey. Um, they run a very successful operation on the corner of Jones Creek and Sixth Avenue. Um, been there for decades and yeah. in, in the family for generations, as I recall. I believe last summer they brought online what they call a bait shed, which mm -hmm. is a, a new revamp pier, if you will, that goes out into the into the river and the marsh. It's absolutely gorgeous at sunset, as you might expect, and highly popular. Right. Uh, with that comes some parking challenges, uh, really over uh, around certain times, 5 o'clock and later. It seems to be their high time. Mm -hmm. And so um, they approached us to see if we'd be willing to, to partner with them and provide any parking overflow parking opportunities at the town-owned properties, lot and properties. And initially we looked at using the grassy area that's kind of opposite the paved mm -hmm. parking lot, which is we characterize as overflow, but we uh, we actually reached out to all the abutters of that area and they didn't like that idea for a number of reasons. A lot of people recreate there. Um, at any rate, um, just a stone's throw away or a step across the road, you have open paved parking spaces. So that was really a fairly easy decision. And so mm -hmm. Uh, we recognize that after five, frankly, we don't charge for parking at the lot anyway, mm -hmm. and there's always space available, even in the height of the summer and the heat of the day. Um, and so we see this as an opportunity, kind of a no-brain opportunity, in that uh, their patrons could park there free of charge now. They're proposing to have valet service, so there's some regularity and consistency with how the cars are coming and going. <coughs> um, and we see that as a benefit in terms of um, um, dis disruption or lack of disruption to the neighborhood. And so for all those reasons, uh, we think it makes sense to, to partner with them in this respect. We also did reach out to Salty Bay Seafood just up the road from them. You might recall just last month they received a liquor license for the first time. I suspect they may enjoy the same level of popularity and mm -hmm. uh, it's possible next season they may look for a similar arrangement. Um, so again, we're looking to uh, dif diffuse any potential pro parking issues and neighborhood issues by <coughs> issue, uh, using some public space uh, to help benefit and support a local business. Public comment? None? I'll accept the motion. So moved. Second. Discussion? Councilor Gaza. Um, if I could, if the if Tom, if you could elaborate on, yeah. uh, if it's free parking, what what is the, uh, what was the $2,000 negotiated fee? What was the, was, the purpose? was that for upkeep it's and maintenance? Negotiators. Yeah. <laughs> well, it depends on who has the cards. <laughs> but yeah, I, I I think the Baileys are are long time. I know they're long time residents. I think they want to be good neighbors. Uh, yeah. They didn't want to certainly take any make any assumptions and take any uh, privileges, if you will. So they wanted to be upfront and, and direct with us, and thought that some level of payment was reasonable. Mm -hmm. 
it creates a right and an entitlement. Absolutely, also. absolutely. Uh, so that uh, without it, uh, that lot can be managed in any fashion that we wish to manage it, yeah. including closing it uh, at a certain point. So okay. that I think it's smart business on their part. Yeah, I, I just wanted that clarification because it wasn't really spelled out of why we would, if it's free, why would we be charging? Mm -hmm. So. Thank you. Well, the other thing is uh, we are not designating any spaces, so it's catch as you can. We're very confident, as, the, as they are, that there will always be yeah, spaces when they need them. Be. This is also a license agreement, yeah. which is very much in our favor. It's okay. much more unilateral than a actual conventional lease. Um, we have more control and abilities to, uh, right. to, to get out of it should we choose through the termination okay. provision. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Councilor Rowan, you had a question? <coughs> I did. I had a question. Um, it occurs to me there's there's a a time that the cars are supposed to vacate her park because it's dust. Yeah. Okay. And does that line up with the uh, the hours of operation of the the bait shed? No. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. the beauty of valet parking. Um, they can just move them. Right. But yeah. it'll be well. It's not dusk in the summertime at five o'clock. Right. Well, not at five, but <laughs> well, that's <clears throat> the use restrictions in paragraph four say uh, their al parking allowance is from five p.m. to dusk, and right. obviously dusk. Fluctuates as through the so season. It's consistent with the mm -hmm. closure time. But I, to your point, I'm not exactly sure what their closure time is. Um, but this does not allow those cars to park beyond dusk. Gotcha. And then they they do have a lot of some, <laughs> of some size, so that they're not, they're not relying on street parking. They do. Way. They have a lot immediately adjacent <coughs> to the business, and then one uh, two lots down, um, also for the business. Sorry, I think Councillor Bavai and I know what time it closes. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was just laughing. Um, just a quick question. I, I didn't see it in here. Are there a certain number of spots that we're designating as being? No. It's just no, wide open. I, wide open. It, well, and I guess then the concern that I would would have is, you know, the 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 balance between business use as of public spaces and the public's access to public spaces. Um, there's another issue that's going on down there around the co-op and access to the waterfront. I do have some concerns that, you know, if, if some of our residents do come down to that and there's no parking, um, that's going to be an issue, I think. So I don't know how we, we deal with that. I'd like to have it see some type of restrictions on the number of spaces so we, we guarantee that the public will always have access to some spaces down there. Yeah, all I can say is anecdotally my staff has assured me that after five I'm there's, down there. uh, there's many, many, many spaces open. But I, I suppose if they had a special event and they needed a hundred, that might be different. Mm. They, putting an upper limit may not be unreasonable. <laughs> well, how big is the seating? It's not that big, is it? Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be... I thought they could well, probably seat a hundred people out there on the picnic tables mm -hmm. and standing areas. Mm -hmm. And how many spaces are there? In our lot? In the lot. Oh, oh over 400. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. over 400. 400. It's a massive it's lot. It's huge. But I'm just thinking if we're thinking that this will expand next year, as you said, there may be other business entities down there that are interested. I just think hmm. we need to keep in mind that we make sure there's enough spots for the public to have access. I think they're going to be upset if all that's being taken up by business space. Certainly, and I think that uh, it being a license agreement, gives us the ability to negotiate it year in and year out. Uh, we're not locked into. Uh, so that if, the, if circumstances arose, <coughs> as Councillor Hayes has indicated, might, we mm -hmm. think they may, likely not, but if they do, yeah. we have the ability to uh, make adjustments. Yeah, if it pleases the Council, I'm pleased to provide an end of season report. Uh, mm -hmm. And if there are problems, you're likely to hear about it before you hear yeah. it from me. Uh, <laughs> Good. <laughs> Uh, a couple of things. First is uh, more technical. Um, the funds, the two thousand um, dollars. What would that funnel through? Would that go into the beach access uh, beach fund, since it's using the, the parking space? Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, so I believe <laughs> that their hours of operation is that they close at eight o'clock at night. Somebody asked about that. Um, however, I'm not a hundred percent positive because I'm never there that late. Um, but there is, of course, taking into consideration under their licensure, they have a maximum number of seats that they can serve as well as they're required to have so many parking spaces already available in which they use the parking lot that is beside the real estate company, which I believe is also family-owned, that they're using a part of that. So um, 
that's already uh, the number of parking spaces is already managed or already monitored or should be monitored by the licensing and the maximum occupancy that's on the <coughs> on the wharf anyways because um, there's also stand up area near the um, the bar uh, restaurant bar area so I hope that we don't worry about that and let the fire department worry on that part um, I like this I'm um, in concept because I think it's a great opportunity I'm a little concerned about a couple of pieces that are more technical. The first is that I don't think that the payment from the uh, company is in line with the contract and it should be because it talks about the payment being received in July 1st, but yet the contract begins on May 15th, and I, I really believe that that should be paid up front. Um, I also think that the 90-day uh, termination clause is a little bit generous. In essence, uh, we could be unhappy with them and their performance, but yet the 90-day clause pretty much allows them to go through the entire summer and still be able to do that without any type of action on their behalf to correct us. So to me, something like this, because it's so seasonal, um, a 30-day clause would be more appropriate. And then I wanted to ask a question regarding Section 7 around the insurance. Most agreements like this would indicate some type of level of minimum liability or minimum insurance coverage, and this doesn't. So you know, um, I think most municipalities require like 400000 or... I've seen different agreements in different towns, and so I just want to make sure we're not um, underprotecting ourselves with the language that's in there um, around that, and would ask that those three pieces be taken into consideration um, before it's finalized. Very good. Those are excellent comments. Yes. Councilor St. Clair. Would those cars be covered? Um, because I know when cars park after five o'clock down there <coughs> now, it's it's at your your own risk. It's not. Time, I think it's even posted. It's not town liability. So would that then roll over to the restaurant parking? Do, I, would that cover that? Because, uh, I'm not an attorney, but I, I can uh, what I've what I've seen it personally in business. Anything related to uh, the consumption and serving of alcohol opens you up to all kinds of potential litigation, and I just think that if something mm -hmm. ever happened, uh, you, um, you, you really need to be extra protective. Well, and, and it's exactly for that reason, the valet aspect uh, yeah. was attractive to me in that yeah. I think they may have some issues. Uh, yeah. I, I suppose the law is once you hand the valet your keys, there's some responsibility assumed with that. Um, that I don't believe is our concern. That is Bailey's. Right. Um, yeah, but if they, fall, if they fall down in the parking lot, there's a, there's a sense of liability there. It's not Bailey's, so that's why I'm looking at it. Um, and, and the reason why it's you know, somewhat sensitive is that we had another business in town that de recently dealt with this at the planning board regarding none such brewery in which they said, well, if this becomes as popular as we think, where is the excess parking going to go? Someone mentioned uh, an abutting property in which the abutter was like, no, we don't want this type of activity. You know, we're, we don't want to assume any of that liability in their property. And I just want to make sure that we're protecting ourselves in case. Doug, yes. uh, um, it, it does um, point out in that clause seven that it uh, says it's an amount to be determined by and satisfactory to the town. I mean, I know that's mm -hmm. so that's so. something that's got to be you know the town has to make sure with your comments in mind yeah. to make sure yeah, exactly. that it's enough. So I, I will certainly finalize that insurance component, but uh, if the council wishes to change the other two, which is uh, <coughs> requiring payment earlier in the season up yep. front, um, mm -hmm. and then shortening the termination time, yeah. it would certainly be appropriate for you to propose those changes now. Yeah. Would it make, would it make, oh, I'm sorry. I mean, I trust, the, I'm not trying to micromanage the manager, I just want to make sure that. Do you want that to see the motion to win? That's what I should I mean. think so, yes. Yeah. 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 That's what Council Baby, would you uh, put the motion, motion to amend? Um, so, Hold on a second, I can get back. I was out on the beach shed looking <laughs> at what their hours were, and I gotta get back to my screen. Um, so the first one, <coughs> apologize. Thank you. <coughs> I'm really sorry I have to get back. Um, so the original, um, the first one I'll take up is um, regarding the payment that, date it, being made. The today. payment date. Um, yeah. So I, re I really I think for the motion, you really should reference this section. I'm really sorry about this. Here we go. Yeah. Come on. It's all the way. See, the good, the good stuff is always at the end, right? Oh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd make a motion that we amend 
um, section three under consider uh, section three under consideration. It currently reads: Licensee shall pay town the sum of two thousand dollars yearly, payable initially upon execution of the agreement, and thereafter on on or before July first of each year. And I would recommend that the amendment um, read: On or before May fifteenth of each year. And you uh, had. Uh, why don't you include the 30 day? You wanted me to do the second one as well? Absolutely. To amend. Um, let me find that section. Actually, can I request we split the question? Would you like to split the question? Please. Okay. okay. Split the motion. Fine. Could I have a second for uh, the motion second. to amend? For Councilor Baybine. Discussion. Yeah. I agree. I think Council he's Rowan. right on. Uh, <laughs> I feel like, again, in, in the interest of the fact that this is a licensing agreement, that we could address this next year. Um, and, and see how this one goes, given that it's already, you know, middle of June. You know, we're talking about two weeks. But. So to that question through to the manager, does that mean that because this is a licensing agreement, it is automatically uh, reviewed every year by the council and approved by the council? No. So this may not come back to the council, so if we don't amend it today, we may right. not have another opportunity? Right. Unless it's purposely brought back. The, the way this is worded is okay. payments are due effective uh, upon execution. Yep. So mm -hmm. um, what you're really talking about is in future years yes. when payment is due. Yeah. And, and that way it won't have to come back to us. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, in my defense or in defense of that proposal, I put June 15th or July. July. July, July 1st. 1st. 1st, excuse me. <laughs> uh, really in recognition that they need to generate some income before right. they can start paying their bills. I was just and trying to be, be my next aware of cash right. flow. They're generating income. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is seasonally. Uh, believe me, I'll throw a credit card. <laughs> um, I mean, I think that's. I think it's a fair request to request payment. Um, uh, you know, before services are rendered or before we enter in a contract. I think that's standard. I, I have, would have no question supporting it. I think if if it does pose a challenge for Bailey's, perhaps we do it uh, one payment. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we can amend it next year to be one payment at, at uh, uh, beginning a contract and one payment at July 1st or however, um, just as long as we receive something in, in, in hand ahead of time. Whereas I think the way, to Councillor Babine's comment, the way it's written now, if they don't pay until July and then they don't pay and then it's a 90-day 90 90-day cancellation, you literally have the entire summer where you don't, you, you don't pay for that. So I, I don't think Bailey's has the intention of doing that at all. I just think that it's, it's, it would be standard business practice to do something along those lines. Yeah. Uh, Councilor Owen, did you have a comment? No, no, my other comment was, well, pardon, my, my other comment was just that uh, it's seasonal business, to, to uh, Mr. Hall's point about the cash flow. Um, uh -huh. I, I feel like peak season really doesn't start until July. We're, they're probably not going to see a lot of overflow parking necessary until then. Um, so I, I guess I'm, I'm not really seeing the need to change the payment date. Other comments? Uh, Councilor Carino. Um, isn't the lobster pound part of it open year round? <coughs> yes, ma'am. So they're open year round. They get it. They have their yeah. year round food handlers permit. Other comments? Uh, uh, voting on the motion to amend. All in favor? Opposed? Five, six, one. Uh, an amended motion. I'd like to ask Councilor Baybine to make a further. Absolutely. Um, under, so I move to amend section 10 termination. Um, and the, I'm going to break these into two and not read the full amount if that's okay. In the first sentence, it currently reads the license. Oh, I'm sorry. That was actually my eyesight in a small font. Um, actually, I don't need to read that first part. I was reading it wrong. I thought that it said licensee. I thought I saw two E's. So I'm going to leave that alone. And under section B, provide 90 days notice. In, Provide 90 days in said notice of termination, and I would move to amend that to 30 days. Uh, second? Second. Uh, discussion? Lady first. St. Clair. I, I, I would agree completely with Councillor Babine. I think that um, 30 days is sufficient notice. 90 days, I mean, if something goes wrong or a catastrophe happens, 90 days is a long time for, for it to get drawn out, and it could just continue to spiral or get messy if we need to pull out for some reason. I think 30 days is plenty of notice. Other I would comments? support that. Thank you. Other comments? All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Uh, we now have two amendments to the main motion. Uh, we are discussing the amended main motion. Any further comments? Just a, final, just a comment on that 
that last point. I think that will be fine, 30 day notice. But there is a, uh, a construct in the contract here, a, a default provision, that if mm -hmm. there are problems uh, <coughs> regarding lack of performance um, with the measures in here, we can take other actions okay. mm -hmm. more quickly. Good. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. That's under liability, right? Default. Under default. Nine. default. default. Oh, sorry. Uh, further comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, order number 16-46, Act to authorize the town manager to sign a quick claim deed on property located at 362 Payne Road relating to an old tax lien <laughs> from 1938. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> yes. This property has stayed in the same family um, for all this time, and now it's being sold to a other independent party and through the normal typical title research it was identified that it was a still remaining uh, tax uh, lien on the property from 1938 uh, under our procedures presumably it was paid we find no evidence of receipt but um, I guess the reason I believe it's paid because we would own it by now we would have foreclosed presumably as strange as it sounds for such a small amount but there would have been some further action taken on part of the town uh, the total amount I should mention is uh, $8.68, yeah, $8 I think. 97. 97. 97. Excuse me. <laughs> so um, to rectify the situation and to allow this property to be sold, they're looking for the town to issue a quick claim okay. deed uh, without covenants that should clear that t the cloud on the title. Hopefully we're not charging them for the, uh, processing the quick claim deed because it's more than a <laughs> clean. I thought of it, but I thought better. So this is a matter to clear title uh, for an old uh, flaw that has existed mm. since 1938. Mm. Uh, with interest since 1938 would be 2.2 $2 million. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually, going to, it was yeah, actually going to be my question. Do you want to postpone this and think about this actually a little further? Uh, Can I make uh, a motion? Good. Uh, uh, in a, yes, in a moment. Let me oh, ask sorry. for a public comment. <clears throat> Seeing none, uh, I'll accept the motion. Uh, so moved. Second. Discussion. I think it's amazing that they did a title search that went back this far and yeah. found eight dollars and ninety-seven cents. So whoever the title attorney was, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah for, for people who always wonder when they're having their uh, sale, title examiners go back sixty-five years. That's the standard length uh, oh, that uh, yeah. they go back. But, but finding it is and in, oh, no. and, uh, and <laughs> yeah. Uh, an attorney here in the audience has said, in Maine, it's 40 years. It's 40. The, 40. The limit. So wow. My New Hampshire practice is showing through. Uh, <laughs> other comments? Those are me? So, I, it, 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 not not necessarily in jest, but it just so it's clear to the public, there is no opportunity for interest or anything like that here. Correct? It's it's finalized. It's, it really is eight dollars and ninety seven cents, and not that was the amount of the original lien. Yeah. Um, again, we show no evidence of a receipt, but uh, further action would have been taken by the town had it not been paid. Other comments? Councilor Maybach. Um, I hope, and I know that we talked about this last year, that the manager is continuing his work to clear any, um, for lack of a better term, frivolous claims or uh, tax liens of this dollar amount, and we can get them cleaned up and not have to worry about this in the future. Yes, I do. Yeah. I agree. Any further discussion? Uh, seeing none, uh, all in favor? Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Order number 16-47, act on the request from the town clerk to certify the results of the school budget validation referendum election. Uh, and I'll ask Tony to address that. Okay, we had uh, the, the school budget validation yesterday. Uh, question one was asking if you favor to um, support the school budget that was approved by the town council at the last budget meeting. The yeas were 1,972. The nays were 1,544, and we had one blank. Um, question two was asking the voters if they wish to continue the budget validation referendum process. The yeas were 2,344. The nays were 1,134, and we had 20 blanks. We had 3,517 ballots cast. Uh, we have 15,734 total active voters as of yesterday, and it was a 22% voter turnout. Mm -hmm. With our primary, uh, we had uh, 2,000, 
539 voters cast ballot, and that was only a 16 percent turnout for the primary election. And public comment. Seeing none, I'll accept the motion. So moved. Second. Discussion. Councilor, thank you. Jeez, I'm chatty tonight. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, I, I guess I just um, I'm glad that I'm glad that it passed so that we can move forward. Um, and you know, I know that um, our finance committee needs a little bit of a break, but I know that they'll start in um, rather quickly again because um, I think we still have a lot of work to do. Um, I'm disappointed by the numbers um, of the turnout. I always hope for more. I say I know I say this every year. I feel like I mean we're so incredibly lucky to have the right to even vote. Um, I was talking with some people. Um, thanks to Councillor Katarina, we had a council table yes. um, at the election, which was really nice because we've never done that before. So it gave us more of an opportunity if we weren't running or we, we didn't have to be there. It gave us an opportunity to talk to some of the voters, which we don't always get to do. Um, and it's. It's, I always thank them, and I had a, a good amount of people that you know, came back at me and said, no, don't thank me, thank you, it's so nice that we have the right to vote. And I just won't wish more people um, would, would, <coughs> ha would extend that right to vote. These are important issues in our town, and um, for me, all of the hoopla that went on that always goes on during budget season, these numbers to me are just frustrating. Um, considering the amount of work that our finance committee does, both finance committee does, considering the amount, the amount of work that the town does, the administration does, um, I just wish more people would become a little bit more engaged with it. Um, and when they become more engaged with it, they learn a little bit more about it, and in turn, it sort of helps us on both ends of it. So when I see numbers like this, and I know that some people will say, no, this is actually okay for you know a primary of this size, but to me, it's it's never going to be good enough until it's until we see like numbers way way up, mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure in November that that will be a different story um, because it is a presidential election. But I would just really encourage people, and you know, there were um, a couple of people that brought their kids in, and that's a big thing for me. I always try to bring my kids mm -hmm. to the polls. Um, it's such a learning experience for kids, and I think if you start them young. Mm -hmm learning about how to vote and then they understand it and appreciate it even more. Um, and so I really just wanted to say kudos to those of, those of you that brought your children to vote. And then there were actually a lot of elderly people that came that required assistance. And if those people can get to the vote, can get to the elections to vote um, that are in wheelchairs with oxygen tanks or in canes, and, um, then there's absolutely no reason that an able-bodied person should not be at the, at the polls. I just, it's just kind of a thing for me. So um, I wanted to just thank Cody and all of the election workers. It was really um, an honor to be able to see it from the other side of it. And um, there is so much work that goes into it. And um, I just really thank you to Councilor Katarina for putting that table together and allowing us the opportunity to um, engage with the public a little bit more. So okay. thank, thank you. you. Other comments? Councilor Katarina. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, thank the citizens of Scarborough for supporting what I felt was a well-crafted budget. I mean, it wasn't perfect, uh, but nothing that comes out of this process is perfect for everybody. That's just the way the process is. Uh, I really want to give kudos to the Finance Committee folks and the Chair, Councilor Babine. I think they just did a, a yeoman's work throughout the uh, winter months and making sure that there were open and frank discussions about what was uh, on, on the budget, proposed for the budget, getting input from the public, um, just making sure that everyone was on the same page. I personally found it a little frustrating. Well, at the last minute, we were still getting questions, detailed questions, and I'm like, uh, well, I, you know, part of me wanted to say where you've been for the last few months, but that's okay. I would direct them to the page the page where the budget was and try to answer questions as best as possible, but um, I, I'm just very pleased that, because uh, this is the first time in I don't know how long, how many cycles, but Chris is to four, four cycles, where we've passed the uh, budget on the first, first try. And I think uh, this is part of the whole improved communication, because I know I, I heard um, being out front as a candidate talking to people as they came in, and I got an awful lot of people that 
we're very complimentary of the council as a whole for the tenor of how we hold our meetings and our discussions and how we seem to get along and and whatnot. And that, that is so important because it models, I think, for the for the community um, what we would like to see. But anyway, thank you for the compliment, Councillor St. Clair, because I had down here to thank all the four of you, five of you who uh, manned the table since Chris and I weren't able to even come in. <laughs> but anyway, thank you for doing that. Other comments? Councilor Davis. So um, I really want to say thank you to Todi. Every year she does an incredible job <laughs> with her staff and with the volunteers that come in. And um, also thank Guy Glenhill, who is the warden, has been warden for, I don't know, probably a good 30 years, right? So um, every year it uh, seems to get better and better and better and easier, and it's a great experience because you get to see everybody and talk to them. But thank you very much. Very professional, very well done, and I appreciate everything that, uh, that you did. Um, you know, it is uh, somewhat disappointing. I, I, I'll be honest with you. Um, actually, the total number of votes cast, um, which was 3517, was more than I projected I, every year or every election. I, <laughs> play uh, the guessing game and I had predicted only about 3100, 3116 to be exact and I was off by 400. So it's a little bit better than what I thought. You know the sad part is um, the night before there wasn't one media outlet that actually said and reminded us to actually go and vote. Mm -hmm. Not one news station, not one radio station, nothing had told the people to vote no matter whether it's Scarborough or oh, yeah. wherever it was because look at the turnout in some of these other oh. locations. It's just Absolutely. Um, Scarborough still outperforms right. and out, um, loves to vote in comparison to our neighbors. Yeah. Um, so uh, I do appreciate those who did come out and vote. You know, this is the, uh, um, so uh, before I get into the details, I do also want to extend a, a thank you regarding the whole budget process really to our counterparts on the school board, especially Jody Shea, who has mm -hmm. helped facilitate and helped steward this budget through its process. Um, if it wasn't for their participation and particularly their advocacy after our pass, um, passage, um, you know, I wonder whether or not we would have been as successful as we were because, again, it was still a pretty close margin. I think last year it was only 311 votes. This year it's 400 and a few, <coughs> yeah, 430. So, you know, um, we got a little bit better. Um, so I do really want to say thank you to all of those advocates that were on that side for helping us with this pass. But I think to take into consideration, we've heard um, over um, at least the three years that I've been re-engaged in this process that budgets aren't sustainable. Um, we can't continue this path, but yet this is the third year in which the community did pass a budget. It came out of budget or out of committee um, at less than 3%, in which the net is now going to be probably at least less than or around 2.65. The last two years have been less than 2.5 approximately. Um, so I still think... You know, you can't talk about it not being sustainable and not being um, able to afford it when you have those type of numbers as a whole. I understand and respect people's uh, concerns and concentration on some of the parts of the budget, but they should focus that argument where it is rightly is placed and not necessarily at this council's chambers. So um, I'm very happy with the budget, and I appreciate all the work that everybody did. And uh, I want to say thank you, and uh, hope we uh, have another good year. Thank you. Uh, the uh, the referendum votes, if you look at the region, are are remarkably low. Uh, there were communities, neighboring communities, in the nine percent participation, mm. oh, yeah. thirteen percent participation. Uh, so there's a, a bit of an unusual phenomenon. <clears throat> I uh, have attributed part of it to the fact that. Uh, I believe an overwhelming number of people in Scarborough believed the budget was in good hands uh, and being ably managed, uh, and they were satisfied with uh, the outcome. And that's why they did not come out and vote. Uh, I think the, I've had a number of people tell me that the efforts of the town council and the school board to work together uh, very hard, particularly through the finance committee, uh, influenced uh, a, a sense of confidence in the public that led to this uh, uh, affirmative vote. Uh, I also think that the, uh, all of those of us who studied the budget really benefited <coughs> from the revamped written budget materials that were presented. And that really it has been the town manager's initiative 
to push his department head <coughs> and having done it last year uh, and seen the success that it achieved in uh, explaining in a better way to everyone what the budget's all about, the school followed suit this year. And so we had a better, a better budget presentation. And that was really the, the genesis of that was our own town manager. So uh, further comments? See none, all in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Uh, Non-action items. There are none. Uh, standing and special committee reports and liaison reports. Uh, start, uh, sure. Uh, with Sean is my name. So a couple of items. First, uh, finance. Um, because of a scheduling conflict with, uh, um, with employment, um, the finance committee will be changing its meetings to the same Wednesday that we currently have, which is the second Wednesday of the month. The next meeting will be July 13th. We are not having a meeting this year because of the change. It gives us some time to get some work done and take a little break from our win. Um, but it will be at 6 p.m. here in Town Council Chambers, same format, same uh, public uh, comments opportunity that has always happened for the last year, two years. Um, wanted to mention for the library, because uh, I am the liaison to the library, is their annual uh, Friends of the Scarborough Library book sale is coming up. It's June 23rd and 24th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. each of those days. And there is a preview day coming up, and I don't remember what that day is, but go to their website and they'll tell you what it is. Um, there's some great stuff there, folks, so I hope you uh, get out and support the library. Wanted to mention that Eagle Maine will be having its annual meeting uh, this week in which, um, I can't think of her name all of a sudden, I want to say Doris, Eisen, uh, Doris um, Roosevelt, and I can't think of her last name. Do you remember her last name? Oh, it's Eleanor Roosevelt's Eleanor granddaughter who is, uh, it's Eleanor Roosevelt's granddaughter who is, the uh, president and CEO of uh, Goodwill of Northern New England will be speaking. And I can't think of her name all of a sudden. I just had a, a brain tease. Um, but um, as elected officials and members, we are obviously welcome to attend. It is at 11 o'clock. Um, I do want to congratulate Mike Shaw, our public work director, and also the second liaison who will be nominated and um, should be approved as the next secretary. He's moving into succession line uh, in leadership which actually may even get escalated higher based on some other news that came forward, and I'm going to talk about that later. And I do want to mention, um, even though it's not an official liaison position on the board, but I also serve on the Cumberland County Budget Advisory Committee or the Finance Committee, and did want to tell you that we are currently reviewing the jail budget. Um, it will be a challenge in which we are expecting um, an increase in community contribution to the budget as a result of decreasing state funding, even though the past legislature regarding the veto issue they did get an additional two and a half million dollars for the funding of the uh, um, the jails. Um, somehow it got out of the legislature without actually funding it. So um, we're not sure if uh, that money's there. So we're going to be challenged again at the county level. But I uh, wanted you to be aware of my continued work with that as well. And that's all I have, sir. Yes, uh, the Historic Preservation Implementation Committee met, uh, discussed a number of issues, and uh, we'll be taking the summer off. Here, <laughs> <laughs> here. That was a nice concise Yeah, there you go. Uh, Long-winded. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ordinance committee. We will be meeting on uh, June 21st at four o'clock um, to discuss a blasting ordinance. Um, I was not aware uh, that the town doesn't have a blasting ordinance, and it came to our uh, attention when uh, there was construction up on Route 1, uh, and it affected some of the neighbors uh, in uh, the Maple Street area, Maple Avenue area. So uh, we are going to uh, start some discussions on that. And also, at some point in the future, don't, I don't want anyone getting real excited yet about this, but we will talk about drones, um, because that's you know something that's up and coming, and it's uh, in front of Maine Municipal, and in front of you know all the lawyers of have been going to things, municipal lawyers, on, yeah, well, what are we going to do about drones? But that's not right away. We, we got blasting that we're going to take care of first. So, uh, And then Long Range Planning at SEDCO is having a joint meeting uh, on Friday, basically to discuss August <coughs> Parkway and also the, um, a, a, as it pertains to how office environments are changing. 
you know, a brick and mortar is going away. I, for one, work from home. I know Calza Cayaza works from home. I mean, we don't go to brick and mortar buildings. Um, and, and just talk about that. We're going to meet at the Town and Country Federal Credit Union building behind Hannaford's area, or a little Dolphin School, I should say, um, which should be interesting because they have one of these newer buildings that are very flexible interior uh, setups. Conservation Commission had a great meeting, um, discussed a potential development off from New Road, which is right by me. Uh, I guess I'm where all the action is lately on things. Um, and that was very good, very good meeting. Great questions were asked. It, it, it was, I found it very interesting, personally. <coughs> uh, Chambers having the annual meeting on June 29th. And that's it. Councilor St. Clair. Nada. I'll show you. Yeah, a couple things. One, the um, Eastern Trail group, it continues to meet and trying to build some excitement and trying to do some fundraising to, con to commit to the project going forward. So there's a pretty active group that's been interested in this moving forward. Um, two, to kind of get caught up, the, the, the Shellfish and, and Harbor Committee did meet this week. Um, actually, on the Shellfish Committee was kind of interesting. They, they had a, someone that came in and actually had some of the information about how much clams have been harvested. <coughs> And it's actually been decreasing the last couple of years. It's also been decreasing across the state. Mm -hmm. um, and they're really starting to get concerned about that. And actually, interestingly enough, David Green did reach out to the University of New England. They have their, their program for sort of coastal research is really expanding. They have 90 students coming in. Mm -hmm. They actually really were excited about having maybe some opportunities to come in this winter and have some of the students work on three different projects here. One looking at the impact of green crabs. Another group looking at the pH, acidity in the water and what that might be doing, and also trying to look at the milkworm, which are all three mm -hmm. things that are really impacting. But the students are really excited. The, the professors are really excited, <coughs> saying this is just a great opportunity for them. So I thought that was interesting. Um, for everybody that, that, that you know, have boats, there are the next couple of weekends, there's going to be something called Operation Dry Water. <laughs> um, it's going to be a combined effort by a lot of the local Coast Guard and others around trying to keep make sure boat safety people are not operating under the influence on other things. So that's kind of a heads up. I guess that's the next couple of weekends. And then the other thing that was in front of both of the Shellfish and Harbor, there's there's some conversations and some um, a lot of discussion around the co-op and the uses of it, and it's in that committee. It will probably be coming back our way at some point in time, so that's just kind of a work in progress. They kind of tabled the conversation. They're going to continue it next month, and they're looking for some recommendations and things to come our way, so that's kind of an issue <coughs> kind of on their plate anyway, and they're very passionate about it, I guess, <laughs> is the best way to describe it. Thank you. Sounds like it. So Energy Committee met this morning, um, and uh, I, I think uh, Councillor Roy it was uh, very modest in, in her presentation. Mm -hmm. She's still active uh, on Energy Committee and still actively engaged in the Trigen, so I definitely appreciate her, and I thought it was very appropriate and appreciated um, Chairman Donovan asking her to, to accept that award on our behalf. I thought that was extremely appropriate. Um, what the Energy Committee looked at this morning was um, they're really starting to look at the comprehensive energy plan. They want us to uh, really start cranking out on the potential for the uh, comprehensive development plan for the whole community. So um, they, a few of them were at the board summit uh, a few weeks ago now, I believe it was, um, looking at how all the other committees are starting to structure to address the comprehensive plan. Uh, I think we're kind of still looking to the council for guidance and leadership of how we want to structure that, whether it's going to be through long-range planning or if we're going to have a subcommittee or how we're going to do that. Um, Energy certainly isn't going to wait for that. They're going to go ahead and start reviewing the, uh, the comprehensive plan now uh, and start developing at least from the energy perspective. Um, Portland Regional Energy Working Group um, did receive some funding of which Scarborough is now, I guess, a part of um, concerning, I think it was a, a grant um, to begin revisiting issues such as municipal streetlights. So the other thing that the Energy Committee will start doing is looking at some short-term projects or, or programs now that we've got through TriGen. Um, they were extremely appreciative of the sustainability coordinator being included in the budget. That's going to be a very, very big, um, have a very big impact on, the, on, the, on that particular board, I think, um, certainly in terms of 
continuing some of their work in between meeting sessions and having a little bit of guidance and support and it was talked about what role that person might be able to play. The, we will not be meeting in July, we'll also take the summer off, which mm -hmm. is a nice thing since it's a 7.30 a.m. meeting. Um, the uh, um, committee members and myself will be reviewing the um, comprehensive energy plan, which is online, I believe, um, and we will be taking that up at the next meeting on August 17th. Uh, in terms of education, um, everybody really was kind of focused on getting the budget passed through, so uh, there isn't a whole lot um, that has happened um, on the educational side of things. Um, they, I believe the next step for the school board will be looking at the late starts. Um, they did, we did have a, a little bit of a, a very quick informal ceremony for Dr. Entwistle as a kind of a going away or retirement uh, type of, of um, ceremony if you were here in chambers. Uh, very well attended. Um, I think a, a few of us were here that were there as well. And um, looking forward to the new superintendent starting very soon. Thank you. Uh, the uh, acronym GPCOG is uh, Greater Portland Council of Governments, uh, and uh, a number of us attended their annual meeting today, at which uh, uh, we received the award that Judy Roy uh, uh, brought forth today, and uh, we were very pleased with that. The town also received another award uh, uh, that uh, today. Uh, the fire department received an award for its internship program. Mm -hmm. uh, that it, it has it's demonstrated great leadership in uh, to try and maintain uh, trained firefighters. So that was uh, uh, very well received. Uh, GP COG is what it's called, and it's really a regional planning uh, device. All of the towns and cities in Cumberland County participate uh, in this, and its role is really uh, to uh, crunch data, to do analyses, to collaborate, bring people together, communities together, so as to plant regional transportation planning would be a most obvious and logical uh, task that they would undertake, just so that people understand uh, when we make reference to these things what we're talking about. Uh, manager's report. Yes. I'm going to just distribute a uh, letter that Chief Thoreau has put together. It will appear in an upcoming edition of the the leader newspaper. I'm pleased to announce, I guess, uh, the fire department has, has gone through its, uh, I guess every five years or so, we get an update for our ISO rating. This is the Insurance Services Office. Uh, mm -hmm. They do nationwide comparative analysis and assess really the safety risk or, or lack thereof, I guess. And it translates into the bottom line of homeowner's insurance, at least the fire mm -hmm. portion of your homeowner's insurance. Uh, the last time we had a full formal evaluation was in 2011, and we made huge leaps and bounds um, strides in that. Uh, at that time, we went from a 3-9 ranking, we have a, a kind of a, uh, a two-fold ranking because we have public water in part of the town and the rest doesn't have it. Uh, at that time, we went from 3-9 to 3-4, and this time we're a uh, class 3 town-wide, which is a big, big deal. Yeah. And the chief actually has dug in a little deeper, and it looks like we're very close to actually a class two rating, which we expect yeah. we'll get next time. So, um, kudos to Chief Thurlow and his staff, and certainly the council. Part of uh, some of the things that we do to improve this ISO rating that you support are the installation of holding tanks out in the rural parts of yeah. Scarborough to provide uh, fire protection in those areas without public water. So, yeah. we appreciate your support, and it does matter. Um, also, I want to use the opportunity. It is um, it's summer in Maine. That means it's paving season. Um, mm. I'm sure many w appreciate that there's areas of uh, Oak Hill that have been disrupted, and there'll be a little more disruption. Uh, namely, Black Point Road will be repaved <coughs> starting next week. Uh, that's the 21st. They expect it'll be two full days. And I do want to mention there's some revised traffic patterns. So again, Tuesday. June 21st and at least June 22nd, the traffic patterns will be from Black Point Road, uh, from Route 1 on Black Point right Road toward Highland Avenue will be restricted eastbound only. And then all of the other traffic from Old Millbrook and Winnix Neck Road will be directed toward Highland Avenue and then Pleasant Hill or wherever you're going. 
Um, so we need to be able to maintain uh, at least one lane of traffic. Uh, the clear will be disruption, but I think we'll all appreciate it when it's done for sure. Um, Eastern Road was also uh, <coughs> the subject of some recent reconstruction. I mentioned that uh, the planning department and police department and public works is toying with the idea of proposing a new striping plan. Uh, this is this section of Eastern Road from Black Point Road um, toward uh, South Portland, I guess. I'm not sure the direction uh, is, in fact, also doubles as Eastern Trail. And we're interested as part of this whole complete streets concept of provi better providing for uh, bicycle and pedestrian traffic along with vehicular. So uh, I think you've all received communications from Dan. Uh, we've sent similar notices out to all of the surrounding neighborhoods uh, that would be affected and are starting to get some feedback. We view this as very much experimental. Um, the final pavement will go down a year from now, next June. And so if it's a, it's a horrible failure, we certainly um, will correct that. But this is actually working in other communities and we're interested in testing it. Uh, by all means, if any of you have questions or comments, don't be shy about offering those up. Also in that area, down East Lane, uh, Council may recall two or three months ago, Unitil uh, came before you. We gave mm -hmm. them this small easement so they could run, improve the uh, gas line from Eastern Road up onto Down East Lane. And as part of that, we negotiated with them, part of the restoration of that uh, work, they actually created a permanent pedestrian access mm -hmm. from the end of Down East Lane to Eastern Road. So if you're down there, you can mm -hmm. provide really nice connectivity. Yeah. There was kind of old paths that had been beaten right. through the woods, but this is a formal, uh, I think, an eight or ten foot um, stone dust path at this point. Um, also, I mentioned Council Rowan because he lives in the neighborhood, but the main turf bike authority advised us just today that they'll be doing work on the Two Rod Road overpass of 95. I mention it because it's apparently going to be quite noisy. Mm -hmm. They'll be hammering concrete, and it's night work. Uh, so good luck with that, Will. <laughs> um, hopefully it will be short-lived, but uh, it starts tonight, uh, well, at 8 o'clock. So. <laughs> and lastly, just a reminder to the Council and all paying attention at home, uh, we are entering the summer season. That's the summer meeting schedule, so the Council meets one time a month for July and August. That's the third Wednesday, so it will be July 20 and July 17. August 17. Uh, uh, excuse me, August 17. July 20 and August 17. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> Council member comments. Let's start down here with Chris. So I wanted to save my budget comments for personal comments because there's a little bit of opinion in here as well that wasn't really, I guess I don't want to say germane to the numbers, but it's kind of my own little spin on it. So um, I did want to say um, thank you to everyone who took the time to come out and vote yesterday in person and also those who voted through absentee over the past several weeks. Um, along with Councilor Katarina, I spent um, pretty much all day in front of Sc Scarborough <laughs> High School. Um, Tody, of course, pointed out the fact that I now look like an Oompa Loompa because of that, but <laughs> I, I do appreciate that. Um, <laughs> greeting voters, and, and uh, I, I do believe, in, in, in spite of um, as much as I would like to see more, I do think we, we really are blessed um, to have such an active voter base, um, certainly in terms of um, the anecdotal, at least, to the communities around us. Um, Regardless, I guess, of which side of the issues you're on, um, I do appreciate all those that took the time to exercise their right, and along with Councillor uh, St. Clair, I believe their obligation to vote. Um, in regards to the school budget, I am uh, very particularly grateful to all those that put their faith and trust in the great work that the school board and the town council put forth and voted for the budget. Um, passing this in the first round not only sends a strong signal that we as a community value compromise over conflict, but it does validate the hours and hours of hard work done by many people who do care deeply about our town. Uh, from everyone from all, the entire town council here, we passed it unanimously on the school side and our, our own municipal budget. Uh, the school board as well. Um, staff works hours and hours uh, for that as well. Um, there were um, community groups involved and, and many individuals as well who, who took, really took the time to um, work hard and uh, really tirelessly to develop, refine, communicate, and advocate for this year's joint budget. So um, I'll say thank you to the community. And I think, uh, I, I hope this is a, I hope and I feel even with the kindness project that we're, we're turning a corner in town and I think we're, 
um, setting a good example, and I hope we, we, we build on the success. Uh, it doesn't mean that we don't have disagreements, but I think we do um, are definitely, at least in my personal opinion, improving on how we address those, and we certainly seem to be a lot more civil, and I certainly noticed it uh, as well as Cal Councillor Katarina uh, with, with people coming up and making comments. So I wanted to thank everybody in this room and also everybody in town for, for helping us and encouraging that. Okay. Yeah, and I think just kind of building on um, the comments that have already been made about the budget, I think I'd echo everything. Just thanks to everybody. Yeah, I think it was a remarkably different process from mm -hmm. the prior year, which is my first year to this year. Um, having said that, though, I, I, you know, I've come from an environment that, you know, I, I really believe in sort of a continuous improvement process. And this year we started a process by which we got together and talked about our goals. And I'd love to encourage us to think about the continuous improvement and really at, when it's appropriate for us as a group to think about what worked well, what didn't work as well, what can we do to even make it better going forward. And I say that because I think we did a really good job on some things, but when you look at the numbers, we still have a, a pretty significant part of the town that maybe didn't understand the budget and the information and those other things. So I think it comes back to, and it was one of our goals, and I think it should continue to be one of our goals, how do we communicate? And I think, I think we've talked about people at the nth hour we're still asking questions, which means either they didn't, you know, the mm -hmm. information was. So So I, my appeal is we did a great job, and, I, and I'd love to continue that next year and think about how do we have that continuous improvement and figure out how we reach some of those folks that that didn't vote for the budget this time through. Thank you. President St. Clair. Yeah, I have to agree with Councillor Hayes on that point. Um, I think one of the frustrating things for me is that, and I had a conversation with someone yesterday, and we were talking about, you know, nationally how people are behaving in politics and, you know, how that kind of trickles down. And, um, you know, while I think we did a better job this year, I still saw some some negativity and some nastiness. And I don't like that. I hate I, it, Like, it's really hard for me to swallow that. Um, and I think there are ways that we can stop, not maybe not stop that altogether, because I don't think that <laughs> that's ever going to happen. I mean, there are just some people that are, always going to have a way about them and that's the way it's going to be done and they're not going to, they're not going to be able to see that path um, to agree to disagree. But, um, you know, I would just hope that, that people could be a little bit kinder when they don't agree with certain things. Um, you know, I don't think that we're made to agree with each other and I've always said that the great thing about um, our council and the size of it is that you get, you're, you're bound to get different interests, different people, different ideas, and that's a beautiful thing. Um, and so I think that showed with this budget. I think we all had an impact on this budget. Um, and I hope that going forward, I hope the Scarborough Kindness Project can get more involved next year. Um, I hope that um, we can figure out even more ways to get people informed. Um, I know Councillor Katarina mentioned that people were asking us at the last minute questions about the budget. Um, and whether that is that their responsibility that they weren't paying attention or is that our responsibility for not finding other outlets? I don't know. I don't, I don't exactly know the right answer for that yet. I think that's something that we have to look at. Um, we have such a wide demographic of people in this town that they get information so many different ways. And I think that's part of the key is finding out all of those ways. And I know that they, this council made huge strides this year. I mean, they worked hard putting that newsletter together and the calendar and, and Tom's team putting together um, a very readable budget this year. Um, and the school board coming on board and doing their part, which was huge. Um, but I don't think we're there yet. I really, I, I truly don't think we're there yet. Um, I saw some things online that just really bothered me and, and made me sad that, that people would converse like that. And I think we have, we, we've got to figure out a way to get past that. Um, we're all in this for the same reason. We just, we want to live in a beautiful town and we want our children raised in a beautiful town. And, we, and a lot of people want to retire in a beautiful town. And I think we can accomplish that. Um, but it starts with us. And it starts with us as a council and it starts with us as a town and then it trickles down. And I, I have to say, I'm very proud of um, the work that a lot of people on this council did. Um, and I'm, I, regardless of what people may be saying out in the public or not saying, I still can sit here and say that I saw some major improvements this year and saw some areas that I would like to improve on myself personally um, because I do think it starts with me as a person. Thank you. Councilor Gatorino. Um, the only thing I would add to that is that um, 
you know, you can lead the horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Um, and we do, we have made a tenfold improvement, I think, in communication. And what we're getting out there and what we're attempting to do, um, like uh, all the way from having the email news newsletters to Facebook to um, the fire department flashing sign to, I mean, there's all, you know, people do have to take a responsibility if they've got concerns with things going on in government to, to go online and go on to our webpage and whatever. I think we're doing a really good job of getting that out there. So um, let's just remind people of that. Uh, but that's it for me. I, I'm all talked out. <laughs> um, so I'd just like to uh, echo the sentiments uh, to thank the voters of Scarborough. I think the uh, turnout, as mentioned before, is tremendous when you look at the uh, surrounding towns. I mean, the, our, um, our vote against the budget would have carried the vote in all of our neighboring towns. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a 7% turnout in South Portland. Yarmouth had 450 people vote. Um, Portland only had 1,500 people total vote. Um, so I think it's really a testament to the engagement in town. Um, and I, I, to echo some of the other comments, I, I really think <coughs> uh, civility is very important. We just need to keep that in mind. I feel like this year was much more civil than in years past. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with this council, and I think um, more specifically a lot of it has to do with uh, your leadership, Bill. I really appreciate the, um, you know, the, just the steadfast guidance and just the integrity with which uh, you've had us communicating. I, I think it's been tremendous, and thank you. Um, <coughs> I think also uh, this budget passing was a great send-off to Dr. Entwistle. Unfortunately, I did miss his ceremony last Thursday, two Thursdays ago. It was my wife's birthday. Uh, but... Um, <laughs> Uh, and actually, well, <laughs> so in, in retrospect, she said, oh, you should have gone to that. <laughs> <laughs> can't win. Can't win. Can't win. <laughs> but, so, but I did forward her the email about the blasting, so I got that going forward. <laughs> um, and then my only other comment was just to kind of remind people about the composting. Uh, we started a couple of weeks ago, and the way that we're doing it is we have a little bin, and we have... Um, uh, compostable bag, yeah. and uh, when I took my trash out today, it's it's amazing how much lighter my my actual trash that I throw away is now. I never really never occurred to me before, but so thank you. Thank you. Wh well, if I could, where do you get the compostable bags? Uh, online, Amazon. Okay. Amazon. Amazon. Yeah. Amazon. Oh, okay. Amazon. That's what I, thank did. You. I did. Too. <laughs> Comes in non-compostable packages. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Comes in styrofoam. One step, one step at a time. That's right. Chris Green and I talking about our frustration recently about how many things don't tell you whether it's recyclable or not. Tell us maybe. Thank you. A few items. Uh, first, I want to uh, congratulate the uh, city manager from South Portland, uh, Jim Gailey, who is uh, unfortunately leaving his post after I think three decades and is becoming the assistant county manager for Cumberland County, which is a great win for um, all 26 communities. I've had a chance in the past to serve with him both on the Eagle Main Board and a couple other um, areas, and I think his leadership is going to be a tremendous asset at the county level, especially as I continue working with, uh, with the county on its budget. And last year, the uh, assistant manager was a key liaison, so I'm really excited about working directly with him. And, um, listening to him, um, his financial experience, so I appreciate uh, his service. Um, the next item I wanted to mention was, um, so I really like your comments, Will. Um, it is all about civility, and um, you know, one of the things that I've always tried to uh, aspire for, and that is uh, leadership begins with me, and how we contribute to the entire situation as individuals, and I think that is the most significant difference this year than it has been in the past, and that is that our individual contributions to the overall leadership of the issue has what made that difference because we've all built very strong relationships with our constituents and with the school board and um, <laughs> both as, you know, as, not only as a group but also as individuals. And so um, I'm really proud of that. And I, of course, I always appreciate, Bill, um, your leadership as well. And uh, except for last Friday, in which you missed a golf tournament, which I found out at the very end we were going to play together. Um, so. Uh, um, I guess the, the myth about how well you play will have to stay a myth until we do get to play. <laughs> um, did want to mention I'm going to be out of town all next week, uh, so uh, thank uh, um, the Darigal Boy State Program has been a program I've been involved with for 30 years, and Scarborough has been a 
participant in that. That is an American Legion, Pro American Legion program that sends high school juniors to a week-long camp in which we teach them the importance of running for uh, everything from sanitary district to uh, town council and there's a mock legislature and senate and someone runs for governor and we select two young men to also attend Boys Nation um, at the federal level and Scarborough's had some very good delegates over the years um, and some really um, outperformers. A couple of them I've had a chance to serve with in the past, I remember, I believe, Patrick O'Reilly was a, a boy stater, and he served as chairman of the council one year even. And maybe even Mark Maroon was a, that was way before me, though. So uh, but um, so there's a lot of heritage uh, within Scarborough. I was a girl stater. There you go. There you go. My daughter was, too. So, uh, yep, so it's a, it, there is a girls uh, program. I've just been with the boys program for 30 years, so I'm really excited about that. Um, did want to also mention, um, I'll leave that for last. Um, the superintendent's um, uh, retirement, and um, so I was not able to make that meeting as well. I believe his retirement is at the end of this month, so this is our last meeting. And, um, you know, um, I'm in a unique situation because there's really only two of us left that are on either the school board or council that have been here long enough to, we've actually, or I've served uh, through five superintendents. <laughs> one was twice, one was an interim and then became superintendent later. And, uh, you know, um, I remember when I ran this last time, I was criticized uh, a little bit because um, in the past I've been extremely, I've been a little bit more conservative when it came to the school funding uh, issues and the educational mission. And I think it comes down to the experiences that I've had with the superintendent because I think Dr. Entwistle has been the first one out of those five that truly was an educational visionary. Um, he has set a pathway for um, the growth of our school system and the true investment in the classroom um, where it is absolutely needed. Um, and I think that he's done an incredible job. He's been probably one of the most professional, not that the others haven't, but definitely the most professional one I have had to work with. Um, and his level of integrity and character, I think, has been astounding. And just to disclose, again, I had my first, actually, um, interaction with him when he was chairman of the Cape Elizabeth School Board. And um, there they were also talking about um, cutting extracurricular activities. And my daughter, who was the captain of the state champion mock trial team, had to get up and uh, address the uh, chairman at the time. And uh, the great thing I can say is that he has been consistent about his priorities in education, and I respect him for that and wish him the, the most luck possible when he goes to Shanghai on his new adventure. Um, last is about the, really about the vote, and I want to combine that a little bit with what's happened recently in the news around Orlando. Um, so it's touched home a little bit for me personally. I have a, a high school friend and his wife and children live about a mile from the um, from the site that this happened and so it's not just about one segment of a community that is um, hit by that it's a, it's about an entire country to some expen uh, extent and then I had some friends that used to work for me that were actually there um, who are safe thankfully um, you know the level of the tone and context in which we participate in politics but even just live our lives um, can no longer go down this pathway of hate and we're seeing it even locally. If you've read the blogs that are out there that attack individual counselors, if you read the letters to the editor that um, really have nothing more than a tone of hatred towards people and their contribution to this community, we really as a community need to say that we can't tolerate that. And it's even the exclamation point on that is the calls that I've been receiving regarding a booth that was up at the election poll. And the level of hate and the target of that hatred can't be tolerated. And I'll be honest with you, I'm concerned about the safety of our employees as a result of that booth. And I think that as a town, we need to do something about that. Um, it, it can't be tolerated to target employees or anybody regarding their gender, um, mm. regarding their sexual orientation, regarding any aspect of their life is not tolerable, especially for our employees. I have thick skin and I can deal with the letters to the editor. I don't have thick skin when they're attacking our employees that way and it's gone across that line. So I hope that we do something about it and we do it very seriously. Um, last, uh, you know, I, I did want to address um, one particular piece regarding the letter, you know, because I did take a, a part of it personally, even with the thick skin, because um, actually my wife laughed about it. And um, so we were recently called both arrogant and invasive in a letter to the editor. Uh, as my wife said, I am absolutely arrogant and I realize that and I'm a weak person <laughs> for uh, acknowledging it or at least for recognizing it. We're all arrogant to some extent. It's part of the self-ego. Um, whether you write a letter to the editor for solely for the seeing your name in writing or whether you run for office is a certain sense of that. Um, I'm not offended by that. What I am offended is about being called, um, not personally, 
but even as a group, that we're being evasive. Mm. Every step of the way, we've answered the questions. You may not like them, you may not want to listen to them, but we have answered the questions. There has to be a point where um, you stop asking the questions and you accept the fact that we may disagree. And then you walk away and you respect each other for doing that. Mm -hmm. And then you find ways of then coming back to the table, compromising, and finding new approaches to those solutions. Government is um, awesome in that it is the most ugliest thing when it works well because you're never going to make everyone happy. I, I recognize that. I'm going to do my best to try to, but there's going to be some decisions that just aren't going to make everyone happy. Um, obviously, there were 1,500 people that weren't happy with the decision that we made regarding the budget, but I'm happy with it. I think that we did do a compromising job, and I think that it was one of the best budgets that I've seen in, in the many years. And so I hope that we continue to do that work and we really get um, really force this level of hatred and this level of uh, contention that's being created um, by others um, really move it away from the table so that we can continue our work. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, uh, I'll make a brief remark uh, about civility because it's been a cornerstone, I think, of, of our, one of our goals. Uh, the, those of you who read the Scarborough Leader or the other weekly papers have seen some very vituperative criticism directed at the town council uh, over the budget, uh, and Sean referred to it. Uh, I felt it was appropriate to lay out with all civility uh, all of the facts and circumstances in detail for the public to realize that the claim of evasiveness and the other names that we were called really were quite inappropriate. Uh, because it must have been 15 or 20 times at meetings the, uh, uh, the six new positions that we added to this budget were identified. And yet still another letter then uh, shows up, again bitterly, bitterly critical, calling us more names. And, and I, I shared this with some of the counselors, but it reminded me of a quote that as a lawyer I always liked, uh, uh, by Carl Sandburg. It says, if the facts are against you, argue the law. If the law is against you, argue the facts. <laughs> if the law and the facts are against you, pound the table and yell like hell. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and what we have seen in national politics has been a lot of yelling like hell. Uh, and I think what we, as seven individuals elected by this town, are trying to do is to stick to the facts, remain civil at all times, and accept the fact that there may be more than one point of view. And people should not be disparaged just because they might hold a different point of view. And I hope that we in our community continue to build that kind of fabric, and I hope that it spreads out to other communities and other parts of our country and the nation as a whole. So thank you. I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Thank you. Vote. Vote. Just for the record. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be called back in an hour.